In this lesson, we're going to learn to use After Effects as a dope sheet for animating mouths. Hi everyone, Steven Schleicher here, and today I want to show you how I record audio and prep it to do some uh, mouth replacement or some uh, mouth animation in Adobe After Effects. And I actually start in an application that's not Adobe After Effects. I start in Adobe Audition, where I have my audio track Just something really, really quick. I like using After Effects because it allows me to scrub through the timeline a little bit easier than working with audio in Adobe After Effects. So here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to go to the beginning of my sound and I'm just going to drop down a marker by pressing the M key. And that puts a marker here in my timeline right where my first sound is. And this first one is e in. So I'm going to go up here to this marker. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to rename that marker and I'm just going to put an I in here. OK, and hit return. And then I'm going to scrub through a little bit for. And we get to an in. So I'm going to put another marker in here and I'm going to rename this one in. And we'll scrub. And here is right where we get to the part where you hear me saying this. So one more marker down. And we go down here. And give this the TH sound. And we just keep scrubbing through the um, timeline in Adobe Audition until we end up with something that looks like this. And here is the entire uh, sequence. I don't know how well you can see it. I'm sure you can see it fine. All of these little markers represent the sound that the mouth is making at this point in time. Here's the reason why I like using this in Adobe Audition. When I go up to File and Export this entire session, I'm going to export it as an AIFF file. But the cool thing is I'm going to turn on include markers and other metadata. And then I'm going to save that file out. OK. And then when I get over to Adobe After Effects, I'm just going to go in and create a new project. I'm just going to call this one mouth sample. I'm then going to bring in my mouths as this is a Photoshop file. In fact, here is uh, the Photoshop file right here. And as I go through, you see that all the different layers are the different mouth sounds for uh, this object. Now, it doesn't have all the, the phonemes in here that um, I, I got this off the Internet. But these don't have all the mouth shapes, but they're in there enough to where I understand what they are. So I'm going to bring in these this file as a composition retained layer sizes I'm just going to go ahead and hit open and so now we have this composition with all of our layers in it and uh, one thing i'm going to do is just cut those and paste those and it'll just put them in an order so that a is first e and so on down the line just a little bit of remembrance for me then i'm going to move forward one frame and with all of these layers selected I'm going to trim that down to that one frame. So if we take a step back, we can see all the layers that are in there for one frame. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is right click on all these selected layers, go to keyframe assistant and sequence layers. Sequence all of these layers. I'm not going to have any overlap or anything like that. And so we see that on frame zero, we have the A sound. On frame one, we have the E, E2 and so on. I'm going to go down here to the end. And I'm going to just slide my composition out point to the end. And then just trim this comp to the work area. OK, so if we have our composition. Example. It's going to be way too big, but that's OK. bring this into my project and we can see that over the course of these first 14 frames we have all of our mouths now here's the cool thing because I'm working in Adobe products when I bring in my audio file you will notice that it also brings in the markers for all of the mouth positions so how do I tweak this how do I make this 
so that when I'm at this frame right here, it starts to make the I sound. And at this frame, it makes the in sound. Now, I will point out that there, are, there is no such thing as subframe space in After Effects. So when you see a th sound here, that marker is there, but the no way I can put a keyframe right on that position. So here's how we're going to do it. I'm going to go in, right click on my mouth layer, and I'm going to go in and enable time remapping by just going into time, enable time remapping. That's going to give me two keyframes. I'm just going to delete this last keyframe, and then I'm going to just slide this all the way down so that this layer runs the entire length of my audio file. Okay, it's not going to move. Nothing's happening yet. I'm going to leave that first keyframe there. Then I'm going to create a new null object. And I'm just going to name that null object control. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, to this control layer, add a slider, an expression control, a slider. And what I'm going to use this slider for is I'm going to change this value and I'm going to have the value of whatever the slider is change to the frame of this mouth movement. Okay. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to enable expressions and we'll get to expressions later. I'm going to alt click on that and I'm going to, instead of just dragging this to my slider, I'm actually going to write kind of a, a little bit more of a complex expression. It's not really hard once you understand it. I'm going to just open up my slider control right here. Uh, so in my slider control, I'm just going to type con equals. I'm going to use my pick whip to go up to the slider. And you'll see that con equals this comp layer's control. Okay. And it's using the effect slider control. Okay. We're almost done here. The other thing I need to do is I need to find something called frame to time. And we're going to go through here and here's frame to time. And it, I'm going to, in this parentheses, I don't have to put anything except con, which is what con stands for. And it should function correctly. So now if I go over to my slider, up here to my effect controls, as I change this slider, you'll notice that it's actually changing the mouths, which is good. This is, this is a good start for where we want to be. So now as I move this, I will be able to adjust these mouth movements, but you can see that this is a little problematic because it goes into a negative value and it goes over into a positive value of very high. So I'm going to go up here to the slide controller, right click, edit the value and say that the maximum number of frames that we need to allow is what? Well, I think it should be 14, no, 12. Okay. We're going to go from 0 to 12. So at frame 0, we're at the A sound. At uh, frame 1, we're at this sound, so on and so forth. And I can just type in whole number. So at 6, it's this sound, so on and so forth. In order to keep everything correct in my mind, uh, I instead of flipping back and forth and figure out what layer each one of these is, I went and just copied this layer and just put numbers along the side of each one as a handy reference sheet so I could just print it off. So once it's printed off, I can just go over here to the composition and I'm going to want to enable a keyframe for the slider, not for the mouth, not for the mouth shape layer because the mouth shape layer is referencing the slider. So I'm just going to go ahead and click right here. And the first shape that we want is an I sound, which is a zero. So we'll change that to zero. Hit enter. And then the next shape that we're going to go to is the in sound. And that would be uh, layer, let's do five. And then we're going to go ahead to this. And here's where we get into a little trouble, as I was talking about with these sub frame or sub time keyframes. We'll just get as close as possible. And the the sound is eight. And all I'm doing is typing these in. Get over here to I which is zero again, and then an S sound. I think it will go with a five this time. And let me show you what's happening. Uh, we got a little problem because between here and here, we shouldn't be rotating through all of the shapes. That's because what we want is for all of our keyframes 
to be hold keyframes, meaning I don't want it to change from this position to this position to this position to this position. So now all I need to do is just go down to the next item. And this one is an L, so that's a nine. And then I'm just going to keep doing that throughout the entire project. And it's, it's going to take a little bit of time. It's typing in numbers. It's not a lot of fun, but uh, it, it does work fairly quickly. But we just keep doing that. And when we are done, I'll just de uh, animate just a real quick second of this. In this lesson, we're going to learn to use After Effects as a dope sheet for animating mouths. In this lesson, we're going to learn to use After so Effects as working, a dope uh, a little bit right there. And by the time we get to the very end, oops, here it is. We've got our character talking throughout the entire piece. So there you go. That's how you do it. It's uh, not really hard. It, it involves a little bit of expressions. It involves a little bit of uh, math, but otherwise really straightforward. You've got a rig that you can use for an entire project for this character.